box start for the webinar. Yeah, I've got, oh, I haven't got a single one there. I thought, oh, shit, I think it doesn't get hot in there. I think I should. Yeah. 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 Yeah, oh, sorry, sorry, people. No time. I thought, shit, I think it's Thanks everyone. Would you touch the place? Hope you should have six o'clock start. Oh, um, we should have a core here tonight of more than ten people, which we have. So I'll declare the meeting open as of six o six o two. First off, I'd like yeah. to uh, pass a, some thanks to uh, Jason Lowe and also to Clayton Hill and Jennifer Millwood who've uh, let us invade their normal. Uh, issued a quarry Queensland branch meeting to have this uh, AGM and of course the normal function will carry on after we finish tonight. Uh, just be aware that this uh, function is going out on a webinar so Fox, some, uh, uh, things need to read you about that. First off I need to introduce to you some of the uh, national members that are here. So we have to my left uh, Paul Sutton if you don't know him you should know him by now. To my right is Rod Lester uh, the techo man behind the computer is Ryan Spence who does all the techo stuff for us. Also from some locals that we should recognise is uh, Peter Mayo from the AIQEF, thanks for coming along. Wayne Scott is, is uh, covering for Danny Duke, the AIQEF. There's also immediate past president Dougal Gray in the crowd that I saw beforehand. Uh, Clayton Hill is also here as a board member, so he has a, a past chairman role and a, and a director's role. We did have notice that John Midas was going to try and join us, but uh, Wayne Scott tells me he's been out at Mount Isa, so he's probably stuck in uh, airports, so he probably won't make it tonight. So I believe that's all the uh, people I need to recognise, but I do have some apologies to be called by Rod. Uh, yes, we've received apologies from uh, Steve Dallabonna, the Western Australian branch representative, and also um, Andrew Newcomb, uh, Newhouse, sorry, and Louise Kibble. They're the uh, representatives from HLB Manjud, uh, the IQA's uh, auditors, uh, unable to attend as well. Do I have any other apologies? Okay, back to you, John. Thanks, Rod. Okay, the agenda was posted out to you um, long before this in September. I will take the agenda as being read and that's the format for tonight's meeting. So next I'll go on to the webinar for the people who've dialed in on the webinar. Questions to be typed in on the, on the webinar page and Paul Sutton will be taking those uh, questions. Now please be aware on the webinar that there is going to be a time delay of at least a minute to a minute and a half before we'll see the questions coming up on Paul's screen. And Paul will let me know there's a question there and we'll then answer the question. But for the, for the group here tonight, just bear with us because we've got a time delay for our other guests joining in. Um, if there's questions from the floor, I'll have to repeat those back to the to people here because the webinar uh, people won't know what the question was, they won't hear it. So that's why I'm using this microphone so the webinar question can go out. I believe that's all the, uh, the rules of the night. So the minutes of the 60th AGM held 18th September 2013 at Jupiter's Townsville, Sir Leslie, Sir Leslie Lith Drive, Breakwater Marina area of Townsville were circulated prior to this meeting. A copy of the minutes are available for inspection at the registration desk and they may be on your tables as well. Are there any matters arising from the minutes?
Are there any matters arising from the minutes from the webinar? Not so far, so keep an eye on those for me, Paul. In that case, if there's no, no matters arising from the minutes, can I remember if move that those minutes be accepted to was at that meeting last year? So Wayne Scott's moving it, Clayton Hill is second it. Got that right? I'll just check there's no other questions coming up. No, so we'll take that as, as a, approved by the webinar members as well. So I'll now go into my President's report. Now the report was uh, printed and circulated in the, uh, in the annual report in full. And because we are taking over the Queensland branch normal meeting, I'm not going to read it out in full because I also need to have some other stuff done tonight. So I'll just take some highlights out of my report if I can. And so I'll just jump through a couple of quick ones in my report. First off, just for members to know that we've um, passed 1,550 members at the present. Now it's going up and down and this time of year the numbers will go back down again because we lose the uh, members that are normally associates that have changed their roles etc. But we'll grow back up again sort of in February, March when the industry gets going again from a point of view IQA branches start to meet. So just how that's how it works. But it's good to see that we've gone past that 1,500 members. That's, that's good growth. We've also started off, and Paul's been involved with this, the Women Inquiring Network, which is something new. But if you look at what the uh, IIWM, which is the mining side of quarrying, that is uh, very strong. And I believe we can make it just as strong in our, in our IQA and recognise the women working in our quarries, in our offices, etc., and, uh, and grow that as well. Young Members is still rolling on very nicely and it has a, a strong focus from our, our other IQs around the world. I'm most interested to see what the Young Members Network is doing in Australia because this is the first and they want to basically copy what we do and so they're asking for us to give a report to the international IQs about Young Members Network and how it works. So that's good to see that we're sort of leaving the rest of the world on that one. Uh, I started off this uh, journey as uh, president this year in February, came back from holidays and straight on a plane and flew to Horn Island, so from one end of the country to the other. And Paul took me around the, uh, the Horn Island Quarry, which was something that we uh, helped to engage and take 12 locals into their Certificate 3. And they all did the course and they all passed, which I think is a fantastic effort for those guys up there. And it actually let the quarry continue to operate. If they hadn't achieved that, they most likely would have been shut down. And that's a very important little quarry for that uh, community up there. And I believe also since then, uh, Edgar Daniels, who was the quarry manager, has gone on and won a, uh, an award with the uh, Schools DMC. So he stepped up even further to the plate. So it just shows that we can take um, training to a very remote place of Australia and uh, make it happen. A and, uh, and locals that probably didn't have any other courses, certificates on the wall, have now got something they're very proud of. And it was very obvious on the night when the mayor presented it to them. So it was definitely a highlight for the year. Uh, PDPs and booklets and so on, Paul, you might have seen that Paul sent out some new training, he's called for tenders for new booklets to be present, uh, printed, so that'll be something new for the Institute moving into 2015. I'd like to highlight and thank the uh, AIQEF especially, um, without their support to the IQA we would not be uh, in the education field as we are, so the funding is very, very important to us and recognise the AIQEF's efforts in raising funds and thank the uh, people who attended the most recent conference that uh, were there on the Saturday for the auction that raised funds that went back into the RIQEF. It's most important to us all. Um, this whole institute wouldn't function without some people behind the scenes and Rod List is very key per person involved with that and also Paul. You don't realise just how much is involved in the uh, organisation and I'd like to formally thank both uh, Rod and Paul and then also we've swapped across to an outside accountant called John Oliver who's uh, running the accounts for us now with the assistance of Gemma who's putting the uh, costing and putting in the uh, various funds into the right account numbers. So the national team is here to help you around the country so please if you have questions or information you need and so on get in touch with the national office. We're here to try and help you make the branch function. The branches are the engine room of the IQA. That's what it's all about. So in closing, I just want to thank the uh, IQA for letting me be president for this year and uh, that's my report in a concise sort of half format unread. But I'll put that forward for members to uh, accept and uh, I ask for someone to move that as a report, please. So Peter Mayo.
Someone second that. Do good. Yep. Thank you all. So next I'd like to uh, put forward that the annual report which incorporates the President's report, the General Manager's report, the financial statements and the Auditor's report, hard copy here. I believe that's been on the web page for a period of time. Yes, approximately uh, five weeks I think it was completed and it was uploaded um, for all members to uh, obviously review and uh, got the opportunity now if they want to ask any questions about the financial statements or any part of the report, feel welcome to do so. Thanks, Rod. So do I have any questions coming in on the from the webinar so far, Paul? Thanks. So on the annual report, did you see it? Have you got any questions to raise now, please, on the annual report in this format? So in the annual report, by the way, is all the branch reports as well. The activities are there. There's also a report on the AIQF. There's reporting on the Young Members Network. Everything's in the report in there, so in the front. It's the most interesting document. Any, report, any questions from the floor for the annual report? No. So therefore, can I ask that we have someone move that the annual report is accepted? Moved Wayne Scott. Seconded somebody. Peter Duffy. Peter, thanks, Peter. I also have uh, some proxy votes here that are five for the annual report as well. So that's passed. Moving on. I now hand to Rod to take us through the uh, Institute acquiring uh, constitution changes. Thanks, John. Um, I'm going to keep this concise because I could talk about it for three quarters of an hour, but we haven't got the time, and I'm sure you're all not that interested, to be quite honest, about the legalities of the constitution and the work that we've undertaken over the last 15 months. So I will keep it brief. I've got a uh, presentation here. I'm just going to ad lib and talk to it as we go through. Um, effectively, about 15 months ago, I guess the board undertook a, uh, a governance session where it realised that effectively the the current constitution um, had um, quite a mixture of um, roles and responsibilities between the council and the board and that was the start of the process where we realised we needed to change effectively the way in which the IQA board and the council operated and uh, we've been doing that in practice for the last 12 months and effectively we've put into uh, place a new structure and this constitution which has been completely redrafted by myself the lawyers have reviewed it as well and corporate governance committee have reviewed it the advisory council have reviewed it and naturally the board have um, considered the new constitution at length uh, so we're putting it before the members this evening uh, to consider and it is effectively reshaping um, the way in which the board operates and how the advisory council functions in future so I'll just run through each of these slides. Um, previously we had three components of the constitution, a memorandum of association, articles of association and bylaws. We now have one document. It's simpler, it's easier to understand and it flows without uh, cross-referencing between documents. Um, there's one set of definitions. Um, previously there was multiple definitional areas. Um, it's much easier to interpret now and we've got consistent terminology used throughout the entire document. Previously there were some references in the constitution to some of the committees that the IKA uh, had reporting to the board but it didn't make reference to them all. So in the proposed constitution we've recognised the work that the Audit Committee is doing and also the Corporate Governance Committee. And we've structured this around a series of appendices to the Constitution which uh, gives the flexibility to the Board to effectively amend the appendices without having to go through a very lengthy process of amending the Constitution. So the proposed Constitution has got um, six different appendices there presently, six or seven. We've got the entire list of schedule of branches and sub-branches. We've got the Membership Review Committee Charter and Guidelines, the Audit Committee Charter, the Corporate Governance Committee Charter, the Supply Industry Group Charter, the Advisory Council Charter and the President's Committee Charter. Effectively the Board now has the capacity to amend any of those charters at any given time without having to go back and change the constitution. To change the constitution has to come before members like it does this evening and it takes a, um, a period of time of probably six months of preparation and changes that need to be considered by um, the Corporate Governance Committee, the board and also um, 
the lawyers that represent the IQA before we can put it before members to change. We will not need to do that in future, so we've got a much more user-friendly document going forward. And as I mentioned previously, the Constitution had a myriad of conflicting powers between the Board and the Council. Um, we effectively had two governing bodies um, reflected in the Constitution, which uh, was very unclear and confusing. Um, that's uh, been corrected in this proposed constitution. We now have a single governing authority in the proposed constitution being the board um, and the advisory council as per the name uh, has been created to give advice to the council. So there's a very, very clear line of delineation now. Uh, we've got a single governing body and it's reflected in a you know, best practice approach and the way it should be. The advisory council can give advice to the board on membership guidelines um, assisting issues in relation to branches and sub-branches to maintain membership, P2P participation and young member network activities. Uh, it's to act as a conduit for branches and sub-branches to represent members' views to the board and also to provide advice to the board on service delivery to ensure that the IQA's vision, goals, strategies, actions and values are being achieved. Um, so it's really reflecting a much more best practice approach. Now the old organisation chart you can see there on the screen, it was a myriad of um, mixture of council and board as I indicated previously and the constitution did reflect quite a confusing legal document. Um, it had an operational component with the general manager and, and contracted officers as well and a, a plethora of committees whereas the proposed um, organisational chart is a much more linear approach of a single authority being the Board of Directors. We have the key uh, Governance Committee and the Audit Committee and also the Advisory Council uh, rec making recommendations to the Board. We have the exec positions obviously of the General Manager and myself and we have operational committees and contractors that support the General Manager and most importantly we have the branches and sub-branches which as John mentioned is the engine room, the IQA. So I don't want to go on any further. I can take any questions and hopefully I can answer them all. Um, there's, it's been a, a lengthy process. It's probably commenced, I think it was April last year in, in Adelaide. So it's actually been an 18-month process, uh, which I guess is accumulating in this constitution we're putting before the meeting this evening. Um, is there any questions from the floor? Uh, the constitution, as proposed, has been on the website since June. Uh, it's been available for members to, to view. Um, we did have some feedback, which we have fed back to those members, so we've, we've gone through a whole consultation process. Are there any questions on the Constitution, or the proposed Constitution? It's pretty exciting stuff, isn't it, guys? <laughs> I tried to make it sound exciting. All right, I'll pass back to John for um, uh, the vote on that resolution. Uh, thanks, Rod. I'll just uh, check with Paul. Uh, I do know that Jeff West has dialed in and also Steve Dalabon has dialed in on online and I'm apologies to the guys online that there is some uh, feedback apparently through the net so there is not a great sound system but apologies for that. So thanks Rod for doing the uh, run through on each constitution I now like to uh, call for someone to to move that we accept the new constitution for the IQI Australia. Thanks Clayton. A seconder please. Alan, Alan, sorry, Alan, yes. I also have uh, uh, six proxies for it as well, so that's accept that as moved. Thank you very much. Now, just a, a technicality, I need to just confirm that the uh, advisory council that we've been running with since the last year and also the technical member grade we've been running with since January is now officially recognised, so that, that covers off on that. Uh, we were the first to uh, instigate technical member grade and we decided to uh, not hold back until now with the technical member grade and so we started to uh, apply that grade from January 1 and I'm pleased to say there's quite a number of technical member grades around the branches and if you haven't tapped someone on the shoulder who's currently associate to say upgrade to tech member grade then you should have done. Okay we'll move into the election of office bearers. First off before we go into this I'd just like to um, pass a vote of thanks on behalf of the IQA to two members that are stepping down and not uh, rejoining the board and that's John Melempre who has served as a board director since 2002 and position of president from 2006 and 2007 and also 
thanks to Leanne Park, who has on, been on the board since 2008, as you may be aware, she stood down this year, and she was also, also Deputy President for, up until tonight. So a vote of thanks on behalf of everyone here tonight to those two members for their uh, untold dedication to uh, attending all the board meetings, etc. we've had over the period of time, especially to John. It's been a, a terrific effort. Thank you. I have one member. Uh, Dave Salendo is coming on from the uh, webinar to say he supports the changes to the Constitution. Thank you, David. That's the delay. Okay, moving on to the election of office bearers. First off, we need to elect a Deputy President. And by virtue of my position in accordance with the rotation provisions in the IQA Constitution, the following nominations have been received unopposed. Deputy President John Midas. He was nominated by myself, seconded by John Malempro, who's not here tonight. Results of the proxy votes received so far have 6 4. Do I have any other votes from the floor for John Midas to become Deputy President? 4. four. 5. Any against? None. I declare that John Midas is now Deputy President of IQA. Pity's not here. Thank you. <laughs> we now need to ne elect some Vice Presidents to the board. Vice President Blake Ardry, who's also our, chairs our Young Members Network. He was nominated by James Rowe, seconded by Clayton Hill. Results of the proxy votes received so far have 6-4. Can I have any votes from the floor as well for Blake Ardry, please? I have four, five, six. No, I've lost hands there somewhere. Seven, Seven from the floor. Any against Blake Ardry stepping up to the board? None. On that basis, I'd like to congratulate Blake Ardry on joining the board. Thanks, Blake. Uh, Dave Salento has actually supported John Midas to be Deputy President. Thank you, David. Next, I have uh, a nomination for Vice President for Clayton Hill. He's here tonight. He was nominated by Leanne Parker, seconded by Wayne Scott. I have proxy votes of five for Clayton Hill. I'd like to call from the floor for any votes, please, for Clayton to step up to the board. I've got lots. I'm not going to count them all. And, uh, sorry, Clayton's already on the board. So he's going to stay. So I should say, uh, any, any against Clayton being stay on the board? Brave person if you are. No. Thank you. Congratulations, Clayton. You're staying with us on the board. Uh, Vice President Tony Ingram is nominated to go around again. He was nominated by uh, Danny Duke, seconded by Leanne Parker. I have six proxy votes for Tony. Can I call for any other votes from the floor for Tony Ingram to go again, please? Seven. Seven votes for. Any votes against for Tony Ingram? None. Just checking the webinar. And Steve has supported so Steve Dalabonner has supported uh, Blake Ardry to step up to the board. Thank you, Steve. And David's come in with uh, supporting Clayton. So, so going back to uh, to Tony, as there's no one voting against Tony, I'd like to uh, congratulate Tony as re rejoining the board again. Tony Ingram, thank you. <laughs> A nomination was received from Scott Lancaster. He was nominated for by Peter Hewson and seconded by Matthew Cros Crosswaite. I have five, I'm sorry if that word, that name wasn't spelt right. I have uh, five proxies for, any votes from the floor please for Scott Lancaster. I have three. Any votes against? Any votes on the webinar? Uh, to uh, Dave Salento has supported Tony Groom, thank you David.
Any votes against for Scott Lancaster? None. On that basis, I'd like to congratulate Scott Lancaster as joining the board. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> and, and one to go, we have John Sabertian, nominated by Joe Maglesia, seconded by Volker Schilling. Uh, John is a West Australian branch member. I have five votes for him. Any votes from the floor for John Sabertian to join the, join the board? Three. I have three. Four. Four, sorry. Any votes against? None from the floor. Anything from the web webinar? Not so far, there might be a bit of a delay. delay. But on that basis, I can, I'm happy to say that John Sabertian is now a member of the board. Thank you, John, for j nominating. That fills the actual uh, the voting of the board members. Thank you. We now move on to the appointment of the auditors. Our auditors are HLB Man Judd, under the leadership of Louis Louise Kibble. The audit firm was paid a remuneration of four thousand three hundred eighty-five dollars to do our audit in financial year two thousand and fourteen. And we expect it to be around about $4,600 for the if they did it again for us in 2015. And I'm advised by Rod, who's an accountant, that that's a very good number for an audit. So I'll pass over to Rod just to talk about that. Uh, thanks, John. Um, yes, not only do they audit, I guess they assist John Olive and Gemma in actually compiling the financial statements. And um, so we're certainly getting good value for money in that regard. And um, I put together the director's report and review the financials with the auditors as well um, but it's certainly I've had discussions with John Olive and it's certainly more than a uh, very attractive uh, fee for the the uh, quantum of work which they're doing so I'd certainly support it. Thanks Rod so on that basis I'd like to call to someone to move that we accept that HLB Judd continue to do the work they've been doing in auditing the report please. Someone vote the floor Peter Mayo second that one Mike Cooper thanks Mike that's passed then we'll stick with ALB, HLB man Judds. We now move to uh, AIQF report and uh, Wayne Scott's going to present the report on behalf of Danny Duke who couldn't make it tonight. Thanks John. Uh, I'd just like to pass on Danny's apologies for not being able to make it tonight. Danny's the current president of the AIQEF. Um, also I've just had a couple of text messages from one of our board members who can't log in, Andrew Wilson in South Australia. Uh, I know he's watching because he's putting shit on me on the text messages. <coughs> I'm not going to sit in front of the camera again. Um, the AIQEF uh, had a pretty good year really. We, um, we uh, raised a bit of money and we were able to um, issue grants totaling $211,000, uh, most of which went to the OQA and, and uh, um, for development of um, PDPs and uh, to some of the branches, some of their activities. Um, so that was a successful year for us. Um, we also had a um, very successful auction at the Townsville Conference uh, and Golf Day there as well actually and um, raised a bit of money so thank you all for those who participated in that. Um, the report's actually uh, as part of the um, annual report anyway so I won't read the whole thing. Um, the only other thing I'd like to do is acknowledge our outgoing president Greg Goodsir um, who's leaving the AIQEF board through rotation. We have a rotation system um, so thanks Greg for all the years of um, service to both the IQA and AIQEF um, and also standing down this year are John Malempre and Dennis Staley who have both retired um, so thank you guys for your um, many 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 years of service. Uh, and the only other person I'd like to thank is, uh, is our Honorary Secretary and Treasurer Peter Mayo, uh, who most of you would know, who does um, a great job for us and does all the lead work for us. So thanks John. Thanks for that Wayne. Uh, AIQEF we couldn't do without them so yes. So general business, um, as the agenda went out and we had to recall for any actual agenda items of general business, we can't take anything from the floor tonight because we need to have that in 28 days notice. So I'd just advise the floor that we can't actually raise any questions now. But if you do have questions you want to discuss outside the AG and we can do that in the normal meeting later on. So on that basis I'd like to call this uh, meeting closed. I believe it's now 6.30 which is spot on time. We had a half an hour with the uh, webinar. Apologies again to the people with the webinar with technology that either couldn't dial in or had uh, feedback problems but that's part of technology. So thank you very much for attending. So I'll hand back now to the Queensland branch.
So Jason, the floor's yours.